Hey guys, we are back in Las Vegas after a bit of a hiatus. Now, if you found my channel from my previous Vegas videos, you know that I do a lot of hidden gems and off the strip places to see and do and experience. But since it's been so long since we've been back in Vegas, I wanted to do just like a classic three or four day perfect Vegas itinerary. So, Chris and I are going to do some of the most classic quintessential things you've got to do in Vegas, as well as maybe we'll find a few hidden gems too. Here's how to have the perfect three or four day trip in Vegas. Let's go. We checked into Planet Hollywood. This was our first time staying here. We chose it because of its perfect center strip location and a huge variety of food options. When we entered our room, we realized we had actually been upgraded to this beautiful strip view room. Perks of checking in late on a Sunday night, I guess? When we arrive in Vegas at night, our first order of business is to go catch the Bellagio Fountain Show. It always dazzles and never gets old. Of course, we can't visit the Bellagio without checking out the conservatory and botanical gardens. And this is arguably the best free attraction on the Strip, and it changes several times throughout the year. On this visit, it was a beautiful display for the Lunar New Year. For dinner, we tried the new restaurant at Planet Hollywood, Rosa Mexicano. This replaced what used to be PBR Bar. You can't miss the bright pink glow of this place, it's got a great Mexican and Tex-Mex menu. We were both pleasantly surprised with the food that we ordered. And when the weather is warmer, they will be opening up the patio if it's not already. For what was left of the evening, we hit the casinos and then drowned our sorrows from losing in pizza. This is pinup pizza on the exterior of Planet Hollywood. I think it's open 24 hours and look at these massive slices. One slice was $14, but that was more than enough for both of us. The next morning, we woke up to a beautiful sunny day and strolled the strip. We ended up at the Link Promenade at Favorite Bistro. They've got an 1895 steak and egg special on every day till 1 p.m. Honestly, this is a pretty good price for the location and the popular area. We walked the strip for most of the rest of the afternoon. Chris is really into film photography, so we had a lot of fun looking around for cool shots to try and to capture that vintage Vegas aesthetic. If you want to see all the shots, head to my blog. There's lots of really cool pictures there. We always love spending an early afternoon just grabbing a drink or two and wandering the strip. It's always fun to take in all the sights and sounds that make Vegas, Vegas. Also to see what's changed. There's always something new happening here every time you visit. That looks pretty cool. And it wouldn't be Vegas without an Elvis impersonator on every corner. These guys do such a good job and they're always so much fun. And just before the sun went down, we hit up Beer Park at Paris, probably one of our favorite rooftop patios on the Strip. That evening, we checked out Top Golf, which is right behind the MGM Grand. Top Golf is a really fun spot to get away from all the casinos for a few hours. You can see the strip, there's comfy seating, and all the food and drinks brought right to you. And the games are really fun. It's way more than just a driving range. You don't even have to be good, as we proved here. Straight down the middle. Really good. And for dinner, we headed off strip where one of our local friends brought us to a hidden gem in Chinatown, Sapporo for revolving sushi. And yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's actually a traditional way to serve sushi called kaiten sushi, which means conveyor belt sushi. It's so unique seeing all the beautifully prepared dishes come out almost like it's unlimited, but it's not. However, if you're hungry at the end of the night, there's nothing better than a never-ending train of sushi. Basically, you just grab whatever you want, and at the end, the server counts up all your plates to determine how much your bill is. Each plate was 
The next morning, we visited the Miracle Mile shops, which are known for being home to several restaurants that offer inexpensive breakfast options. We ended up choosing flights because Chris is a pilot and obsessed with everything aviation. And while it's not the cheapest place for breakfast, they do have a really great rotating happy hour all day long. And most menu items come in flights of three. Sometimes you just need a break from gambling and drinking and eating. So that's what we're gonna do. We're taking a break and we're gonna hit up the Arte Museum. The Arte Museum is brand new on the strip located at the Aria. And all I can say is, wow. We were both blown away with how cool this place was. You basically pass through all these hypnotizing art and light shows. It was like being totally immersed in 360 degrees of sensory overload, but in the best way. It was oddly relaxing. When we left, we were chilled out and a little derpy, almost like leaving a spa or massage, but for your mind. It's honestly pretty indescribable. There's even a room where you can draw your own animal where it becomes animated and comes to life on the wall. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> Each room was more fascinating than the last and overall definitely worth the admission of $50. We made a quick pit stop for some provisions and then went to check out Circus Circus because they still have a lineup of coin-operated slot machines. And if you're under 40, you've probably never experienced them, so we had to try our luck, of which we had none. They do have a lot of old school carnival games, which, not gonna lie, were a little creepy, but definitely brought back some nostalgia. If you have kids, this would be a lot of fun and again, just something fun to do if you need something else to do besides gambling. Whoa! Winner! Chicken dinner. We then made our way to downtown Las Vegas and our first stop was the new carousel bar at the Plaza Hotel. We just ordered a couple of beers and enjoyed the atmosphere, but don't miss out on the secret menu. There's a QR code on the back of the menu for it. Next, we popped into the D Hotel to find the Sigma Derby. It's the last remaining machine of its kind in Las Vegas. It's a mechanical horse racing game and it's 25 cents per bet. All you have to do is bet which horses will come in first and second. If you're not a huge gambler, but maybe you wanna try something, this is totally the game you should play. It was tons of fun and we ended up sitting there for almost two hours. We started with $10 worth of quarters and we left with about $40. And yes, drinks were free while we were playing. When it got dark, we headed to the Neon Sign Museum. This isn't too far from Fremont Street, only about a five minute drive. It features vintage neon signs from all the old casinos, motels, and other businesses from the city's past. Evening admission for a self-guided tour is $25, but there are also guided tours and other types of shows, as well as daytime admission prices. This is definitely a must do at some point in your Vegas travels. As the night was still young, we headed back to the Fremont Street Experience. This is when it really comes alive. We enjoyed the light show, the free live music, photography, and people watching. It had also been a few years since we've done the high roller observation wheel. And now with the sphere as part of the skyline, we decided to take another ride. I would say this is another classic Las Vegas experience that must be done, especially at night. Admission is $35 and you can bring a drink on board, or you can also do the happy hour experience that comes with an open bar while you're on board. The ride is about 30 minutes long. Since it had been a long day, we decided to stop at In-N-Out Burger, which is conveniently only steps away from the high roller. We had to see what all the fuss is about, so we ordered burgers and fries to share, both animal style. 
I'm curious, where do you guys stand on In-N-Out? Some people think it's mid at best, but we love the burgers. The fries, not so much. There's just something really good about the burgers. They just feel like the most quintessential cheeseburger. Nothing fancy, just delicious. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of this spot. Then it was back to the hotel where we fell asleep before we even hit the pillow. On our third morning, we sat down at La Salsa Cantina. They advertise a $6.99 breakfast special and 99 cent Bloody Marys. Honestly, you can't go wrong for bacon, eggs, hash browns, and tortillas for $7. Even though prices have gone up a couple of dollars in the last couple of years, it's still one of my favorite value breakfasts here in Vegas. 50,000 steps later, and we're about to start day three here in Vegas. Today, we had planned to visit some more attractions on the Strip. I really wanted to try the Paradox Museum, but when we got there, of course, it was the only day of the week that they were closed, which was Wednesdays. Right above it happens to be Brewdog, which we heard has a great rooftop patio, so we stopped to check it out. This place is massive and the rooftop is huge. It would obviously be much better at night, but overall, this place was actually kind of a miss for us. The service was almost non-existent, and I was expecting a much larger craft beer list from a place called Brewdog. Anyway, I would give it another shot at night, but I really wasn't impressed on our first visit. Switching from beer to bodies, this is the real bodies exhibit at the Horseshoe. Here you see real human bodies that have been preserved to teach you about different aspects of anatomy, medicine, disease, birth, and death. It was really fascinating, and if you haven't been to one of these types of exhibits before, I would definitely recommend it. We then stopped at Old Red. This is Blake Shelton's new honky-tonk bar. They've got live music all day from open to close. It's a great new spot and it's going to be very popular. This is definitely a new favorite of ours for sure. Next, we made our way down to the Luxor and explored the King Tut exhibit. This was really well done. Chris is a bit of an Egypt nerd and he really liked it. The way they walk you through the life of the Pharaoh was really well done and the artifacts were gorgeous. You would almost never know it, but Vegas is full of all kinds of mini museums and high quality exhibits. So if you have no interest in gambling or drinking or partying, you still have so many great options to keep you busy. After exploring around the Luxor, it was finally time for what we came to this hotel for, Play Playground, which is kind of like being in your own game show. You enter through a slide and get shot out into what feels like the set of a Nickelodeon game show on steroids <laughs> with a bar. How, how does this work? <laughs> what, what do you even do? Wait, is this for speed? Yeah. <laughs> Bye forever. <laughs> nice knowing you. <laughs> that was pretty fast actually. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> a lot of the games feel like faithful, life-size recreations of classic kids games from the 90s. Some were strategy games and some were pretty physical like this Bop It style game. Just sit right there. <laughs> on the wall. There you go. Honestly, this was an absolute riot. With two people, it was great. I think with four people, this would be the ultimate way to do it. Some games you have to work together to win, some games not so much. This place just opened in January 2024, and after 5 p.m., it becomes adults only. General admission is $35. The games run on a credit system, but the admission gets you enough credits to try each game at least once. We skipped a couple of games and doubled up on a couple more, and I thought that was actually the perfect amount. A couple of drinks and all that cardio and we were pooped. Drinks were a little pricey, but very good. Overall, this is a great new addition to the Vegas Strip. Sadly, the next morning we had to check out and head home, but we will be back in Las Vegas very soon and we still have a few more videos from this trip that will be published over the next few weeks. So please stay tuned for more Vegas content. And as always, let me know in the comments what you'd love to see featured on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.